So you're looking for a sales training course that's going to help you sell more jewelry where well, you've found the right video. This is part number six, stories that sell. Make sure to watch through to the end of the video. This way you can see what's going to be coming up in part number seven of this 10 part jewelry sales training course. Uh, now make sure as well before continuing with this video, if you have not seen part number five, click right up here into the corner of the screen, click it now before continuing with this video. It is a 10 part sales training course because you follow it from part one all the way through to part number 10. Now, if you have not met me as well, my name's Levon and I'm the owner of Crew Goes Digital, the channel you're watching at the moment. Here we're focused on bringing you techniques, skill sets and personal development tips to help increase your success and increase your sales within the luxury retail industry. Not in decades, not in years, not in months, not in weeks, but right now. So consider subscribing to the channel if you're working within this industry or you're looking at getting into the luxury retail industry as well. And now why should you really be listening to me as well? Well, I was a port and shopping guide for Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruise Line. You have tray after tray of settings to pick. This is the Levian Get around for a shopping emergency. And my entire job would be to tell people where to shop and how to shop in these different Caribbean ports that the cruise ships would be stopping at. And majority of the shopping is all to do with jewelry, luxury goods, because it's a tax and duty free zone. But now I really needed to be able to tell stories because imagine this, you're down there on a cruise, you go swimming with the dolphins, you go to the beach. What did I want the customer to be able to tell their friends and family members back at home about the story about them sitting on this white sandy beach or the story about this guy from New Zealand that was telling me where to shop and told me about emeralds and how emeralds were connected to Cleopatra as well. You know, something so much more interesting. So that was what I was competing against when it comes down to stories. Think about what you're competing against when it comes down to stories now as well. But hey, that's enough about that. Let's get into it uh, as well by first of all, you scrolling down and letting me know down in the comments, what is your favorite story to tell when selling a gemstone as well? I know everyone has their favorites. Everyone has their go-tos. I'm interested to know what is your go-to. So scroll down, let me know that as well. And now let's begin. We're starting with Amethyst first as well. A beautiful gemstone. And now early Greek legend associated amethyst purple wine color with Bacchus, the god of wine as well. Now already by just mentioning a couple of these parts, the god of wine and its association to amethyst, that can excite a lot of people. Trust me there. Um, yeah, other legends have also believed that amethyst and people that would wear amethyst, that it would keep their wearers cl clear headed and quick witted in battle and business affairs. Uh, and Amethyst has been the most prized member of the Quartz family for centuries. Now, why do I mention this? Amethyst is a gem that is so underrated, especially by so many jewelry professionals, because when it comes down to the price point, it's relatively affordable for most people. Uh, and because of this, a lot of people don't really put in that additional effort behind being able to romanticize and sell a gemstone like amethyst uh, and really think about this because sales though sales is about building a relationship maybe that customer the first time they come into your store they spend fifty dollars maybe the next time you know a year later they spend 150 maybe two years later they end up spending a thousand dollars but no matter what that amount is the first time that customer comes in remember this is opening a relationship and that first transaction that the customer makes with you is that start for you to really be able to develop that relationship and turn that $50 that they spend now into $10,000, $20,000, $100,000 over a period of time as well. So make sure to really be able to spend time learning stories about gemstones like amethyst. I can't stress this enough. And uh, now let's move on to number two is rubies. Now in Burma, of course, Burmese rubies, romantic around that, uh, as many customers would come asking you for Burmese rubies if you're working in a jewelry store at the moment. Uh, now, Bur Burmese rubies, so in Burma, warriors actually wore rubies to make themselves invincible in battle. Right? Many medieval Europeans also wore rubies because it was going to guarantee health, wealth, wisdom, success, and love as well. Uh, and it's the birthstone of July. If you did not know that as well, Ruby's the birthstone of July. Uh, does, does your customers though as well, think about this, do your customers know what their birthstone is? 
Now, do you ask your customers this as well? Because you might be surprised, something that you think is such a common thing to know because you're working with jewelry, a lot of customers will not know this, but a lot of customers will actually end up buying something because it's related to their birthday. Their, it's related to the, you know, the once, in a, once in a year event that they do where they're going to buy something crazy for themselves. So why not buy a piece of jewelry from you? You know, think about that for a moment as well, because also uh, I really like to mention the fact that rubies and the connection to Burmese warriors and the fact that them wearing rubies made them invincible in battle. Because not many people that I speak to when working in a jewelry store really know how to romanticize or story tell towards men as well. Because we all think a lot of the time, a lot of men, yes, they are logical buyers, especially when it comes down to jewelry. But to be able to tell at least a few little stories in there as well can really help and separate yourself again from the generic responses they keep hearing when going into a store uh, as well, which might be, you know, it's about the value, the future value that this is going to have. And then, you know, you speak the emotional points to the wife. You know, you need to be able to mix and blend a little bit of both as well. So this is wise for you to be able to know stories that you can also use to sell to men, not just to ladies. And now let's move on to number three, emeralds. So legend gave it power uh, that wearing emerald would make the wearer more more intelligent and quick-witted as well. Uh, wearing emeralds too was meant to also help uh, remove and cure diseases like uh, malaria as well. Uh, its color reflects new spring growth as well, which makes it the perfect birthstone for May as well, of course. Uh, and it's also the gemstone for the 20th and 25th wedding anniversary. Uh, and the first known emerald mines, they were actually found in Egypt. So a lot of people now today would speak about Colombian emeralds because that's where a lot of, well, this is where a lot of the information comes from. Colombian emeralds, the best emeralds in the world because of the stories we've all heard about it. But not many people knew that the first emerald mines were actually found in Egypt uh, back in 330 BC. Uh, and then into the 1700s, Cleopatra was known to have a passion for emeralds and it was used in her royal adornments as well. Um, you know, does your customer know about anniversary stones. This is another thing too. They might know about the birthstone, but do they know about the anniversary stones that people buy to celebrate their 20th anniversary or their 25th anniversary that they buy emeralds for this as well? Uh, or does your customer know about emeralds connection to Cleopatra as well? But bringing up some of these points, uh, it can really help you elaborate on telling so much more of a memorable story that's really going to get the customer to connect with that gemstone in the moment as well. And it's such a deeper level than just the beauty of that piece or the beauty of that design itself. So make sure to learn some of these stories. Uh, and one of the tools that I have available for you to be able to learn more of these stories is my Udemy jewelry sales training course that I've developed. And you'll find a link down in the description for this we have covered over 47 gemstones, 47 different gemstones with multiple stories that you can easily use to be able to romanticize these. So check out the link down in the description for that as well and a book that you must read. It's called Stoned. I've got a picture of the book up here on the screen at the moment. You can see over to this side, make sure to download this book. Um, this book goes through detailed stories about pearls and how pearls first started to become cultured as well. Uh, it goes into the finding of emeralds in Colombia, and it really gives you so much more detail. So if you're really a detail oriented person when it comes into storytelling and you want to know everything about the story first, make sure to pick up this book because this book will tell you that as well. The book for that, uh, so the link for that book is down in the description as well. So make sure to download that book as well uh, from Amazon. Uh, now in part number seven, we're going to be talking about closing questions. These are important. You know, how many options do you have to be able to ask the customer to purchase? Does the customer have more reasons to say no than you have questions to ask to maybe get them to say yes? You know, think about that for a moment. How many ways do you know how to close a sale or how to ask the customer to go ahead with making that purchase as well? Uh, and during this part, part number seven, I am also going to give you a resource that has over 100 different ways of asking for that sale as well. So make sure to watch part number seven that's going to be coming up soon and subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure to click that bell icon so you'll be notified when the next part is up and the next video is up on the channel. I'll see you in part number seven.